Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Sasha Newman. She is an amazing, amazing hurdler representing Dillard University out of Antioch, California. Sasha, welcome so much and thank you uh, for granting us this interview. Thank uh, you for having me. We want to talk to you a little bit about you are on the road to the championship. You will be competing here in a couple of weeks at the NAIA Track and Field National Championship. Uh, in Gulf Shores, Alabama, you will be competing in both the 100 meter hurdles, the 400 meter hurdles, and the 4x1, I believe. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about your season so far, your training, and, and how you're feeling going into nationals. Well, this season has been, um, it's been great leading up to now. Um, unfortunately, I did have a car accident that set me back a while. But um, after that car accident, I just kind of made up my mind. And while um, coming, off of the accident and recovering. I was just praying to God that he'll give me the strength and the power, the focus, most importantly, and the um, belief in myself that I can get back to where I was last year, if not better. I just want to come back and make a re remarkable recovery. And, and that you have. You had great success at the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference Track and Field Championship here a couple of weeks ago at Tad Gorman Stadium, uh, which is right behind us. Okay. Uh, you completely dominated in in your events um talk a little bit you said you had a, a car accident talk about your rehab process and what you've been what you what you did to prepare for uh our champ for conference championship uh and and how you were able to be so successful especially coming off the heels of such a major injury um well my accident it set me back um about two months only because during the accident the airbags impacted my eyes which um gave me holes in my retina so that can cause blindness and retina detachment. So I basically had to have multiple laser treatments on my eyes, which um, holds me back from doing any excessive activities or being active in any way. I basically had to be stable. So in my process, I just worked on weights, getting stronger, making sure when I came back, I would be even stronger than I left. And when I was able to come back and run, I'm doing two a day practices. I mean, three miles and then coming here to the track and doing 400 workouts, hurdle workouts, whatever it is to get better. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's up to me if I want to be great. So leading up to um, conference, you know, I was talking to coach and asking him what are the events that I'm most likely going to be running, even though I know I'm in about seven each conference. Um, just setting my mind up and preparing myself to just come here and do what I can for my team because at the end of the day conference, you have to be selfless. You have to do what you have to do to win and to work for your team. So preparing for that was multiple practices every day. Now, what fueled your desire to come back? A lot of athletes, they become injured. They cannot get back into the groove. They can't get back into the rhythm. They can't really come back the way they were. What fueled you to come back in the way that you did? Kind of what was going on inside of your head that, that was telling you, you know, I've got to come back and I've got to do this? Um, most importantly was my mom because I know how devastated my mom was about my accident and how far it set me back, not only in track, but in school, missing weeks of school and um, having to get better. So my mom and God and also my team, I really, I'm the type of person where I, kind of, I do everything for everyone else. So it's kind of like, I wasn't really thinking of myself, but most importantly, thinking of how my coach would look at me. You know, I don't, I don't like to disappoint anyone and I didn't want him to you know, think of me how other athletes, like you said, when they get injured, they take it and run with it. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. I would hate to be looked at like that. So I really just take in consideration of how everybody would look at me and how um, it, would look, it would look great if I can come back and be even better. Like, what kind of story would that be? Now, you did go to nationals last year. Uh, we do want to talk a little bit about that, but I also want to talk about how you how you came to Dillard University. There's a really interesting story about how you came to Dillard, how you became a Blue Devil. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, it's funny because I didn't even know about Dillard University. I haven't even heard of Dillard University before coming to college. But um, in California, we don't have a lot of HBCUs, so we have a lot of HBCU fairs that um, kind of network us with other HBCUs across the country. So on the school bus on the way to the HBCU fair, we had to fill out one application on the bus and they just gave us all a Dillard application. I filled it out, didn't think about it once after that. I just was like, oh, I can't wait to go into this, you know, this fair and go apply to Spelman, Clark, Howard, wherever, you know, all the big HBCU names. And um, a few months after that, actually going into maybe 
April, like so at the end of my season, one of my teammates, Kira Canty, who goes to Grambling um, University now, uh, she told me that she was talking to the Dillard University coach. And at this time, my coaches weren't really helping me in high school um, reach out because I did have an injury my senior year as well. And so coaches from other colleges stopped reaching out to me. Um, so I just said I have to get it how I can and just reach out to other coaches and figure out how I'm about to pay for college. So um, I reached out to the Dale University coach and I was like, hey, I, you know, I'm coming off an injury, so I know my times aren't the best, but I was looking into seeing if you were taking in any hurdlers or any runners for any event, really, because I do run cross country as well. So he was just telling me, yeah, and just keep working on my times and he'll see what he could do for me. And so he gave me what he could and it doesn't matter how small it was, I was going to take it because it was some money for college. Now, you, you were an exceptional hurdler in high school. I uh, did a little bit of research. Um, you, have multi, you, know, you have championships under your belt uh, from your time in high school. How has your training as a hurdler in high school, how did that translate to your success here uh, now at Dillard University and preparing to go on to nationals for the second time? Uh, how, how, did, how did your training early on kind of contribute to your success? Um, well, my training in high school, my coach was, um, he was very hard on us, and he let us know that if we want to go to college, this was our way. So there wasn't any, you know, coach, I can't do it, or no can't. So in high school, my coach was very um, stern, and he made us run cross country. Everybody on our team ran cross country. So to be honest, even though sprinters and people under 400 runners and 800 runners tell them cross country won't help them, yes, it will. It makes you stronger. It builds your endurance. It doesn't matter. You translate it to the track, no matter what you say. So we, everybody went cross country, and then when we got to the track season, um, it was back-to-back 600s. -back like, I mean, 600s for days, 600 over hurdles, 400s over hurdles, everything. Um, so with that, it got me stronger, and it built my man, my mental mentality, just knowing that um, whatever I whatever I do in practice is going to translate to the track, no matter what it is. So with that being said, coming to college, you know, I came with the mindset of, Hey, if I could do it in high school, I could do it here. And I know that it's harder only because there's so many more distractions in college. But um, having a team and a family is really what holds me together at practice. And it just builds my confidence in wanting to run with my team. So. Now let's talk about Nationals. 2016, you go into Nationals, you are highly ranked uh, as a hurdler. Uh, and then the 400 meter hurdles come up. You had a little bit of a of a challenge there, so let's let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so going into nationals, I was very nervous. I will not say that I wasn't nervous, but like I said um, then and like I say now, I just leave it up to God. Every time I go to practice, every time I'm going to meet, that's all I think about is God. Put me, get me through this, and I will do the best that I can. As long as I believe in myself and believe in you, I can do it. So um, going to nationals, I was very nervous, and like I said, I think of other people. So I was just thinking of how my coaches will feel, how my teammates will feel, if I could just go out there and do my best. So um, with the 400 meter hurdles, I was determined to win, and I was determined to do my best, but unfortunately I fell. And after falling, I mean, I got back up and I finished the race, and I think I finished in seventh, but um, unfortunately I didn't make it. Um, to the top eight so I wasn't all-american but after falling it just made me think about maybe that's just where I wasn't supposed to be right then and there like um, and I did have another race so I just had to you know get focused and have basically a talk with myself and have a talk with God and just make sure that I was focused and ready for my next race because at the end of the day I can't let one race affect my my next so and that next race was the 100 meter hurdles yes sir. Uh, which you placed fourth yes uh, Talk to us a little bit about, you conclude the 400 meter hurdles, there's a day, okay, so you have to go back to your hotel, you've got to carry on, but then you've got to come back and compete the next day. How did you deal with the disappointment? How did you deal with the frustration of the outcome of the 400 meters? And how did you overcome that to then place fourth with a great time uh, in the 100 meter hurdles? Um, to be honest, I did a lot of crying. I did. Um, I cried a lot, but then I also thought a lot um, about myself and where I wanted to be. So um, I didn't want to be the person that, you know, let it all go after one, one race. Like I, I, didn't, I wanted to come back and just prove to myself and prove to my teammates that no matter what, that you could do it and that you can't let anything stop you. So um, 
yeah, I really had to just have a come to Sasha moment and come to God and just ask him to put me through to the next day and um, just get me through no matter what. So now here we are about two weeks out from the 2017 uh, NAIA Track and Field Championship and you know as they say you have unfinished business. Uh, what is your mentality going into this year's championship? Woo! I want to tell you is to go hard. I'm leaving it all on the track. I mean I want everybody to come picking me up after my races. Like, I don't want to leave anything out. I mean, it's I'm leaving it all there, and I'm just leaving it up to God to get me through. Well, Sasha, we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you a lot of success at Nationals, and uh, we definitely wish you the best in all of your endeavors moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you.